Today we are going to make a cup koozie. Okay. So I made this one weird and scrappy about two hours ago. So I'm gonna act, this is actually a two for uh, demo. I'm gonna show you how to use a couple of different things. So these are a relatively new product that I just got. It's kind of fun. So when we, um, I have some of these that I've made in the past that weren't near as easy to make as this, that we use for a strip poker night that have all kinds of like poker jokes on them. But these actually, I know they look weird, but they actually go around your cup like this. And they have an elastic band on them so you can put them around bigger cups. Or what you can do is move your button over. So if you know you're gonna use a coffee cup or you're gonna use a pint glass, you can, I didn't make my elastic long enough to fit my big fat cup. I mean, it will if I really stretch it. So um, you can make your to-go cups, you know, quilty. Isn't that cute? This cup's a little bit big for this shape. So if you wanted to use it on a pint glass, you would have to, you would simply have to move your button over. Okay, I put the button on just at the last minute, but depending on what you're normally gonna use, so if you want to put on pint glass, you could lay it on here, and I'm gonna show you when you put the um, elastic on, maybe you wanna put your button over here instead of on the end, okay? Or if you know you're gonna put it on a coffee cup or whatever. This is probably about the size that I would shoot for, um, so we probably should move our button over a little bit, okay? But it makes so that you can, it insulates your coffee and it keeps, or it keeps your beer from sweating on your hands. So either way, it's dual, dual purpose, okay? So we are going to talk about how to make this, okay? So these come in a package that are pre-cut. The shape is pre-cut for you. There are eight in this package, which means you can make four um, cup koozies out of one package, okay? So we're gonna talk about that in a second. So. First, we're gonna talk about how I made this fabric. So this product here is called Scrap Tape. It's a whole lot of fun to use. It's really great for those little bits of pieces that you have laying around. So think like a crumb quilt, but uh, jelly roll size strips. It's two and a half inches wide. So here's a chunk of it. It's two and a half inches wide and you sew directly to this. I'm gonna show you real quick what I did. This is a scrap of what we made. I made sure that all of my pieces were two and a half inches or bigger. You should probably go for three inches or bigger because then you can trim it down to the size that you want. All I did was put two pieces of fabric right side together and sew a seam. And then I opened it. I used my presser tool, which we're gonna talk about in a minute, and I pressed it open with the presser tool. And then I put another piece of fabric right side together and I sewed it on again. So I'm gonna show you really quick some tips on doing that, okay? I like my quarter inch foot for this process because my quarter inch foot's kind of my favorite anyway. If you have a stand on your machine, it's kind of helpful because you can lay stuff right here before you start sewing it. So I just, this was like a leftover chunk from me making my sample, so I, I'm just gonna show you on this small piece. But if I take one piece of fabric and put it right side up, the first piece goes up. The second piece is going to go down because you want your fabric right sides together. Your stabilizer goes on the bottom. And I'm going to use my quarter inch piecing foot just because it's going to ride along the stabilizer real nice to make a seam. Okay. Now, if you're making a whole bunch of these, you could just chain piece them and snip them apart separately. Going to open this up, and of course I left my pressing tool on the table. So you can finger press it. I like a pressing tool instead because I find my fingernails are really hard. So I find that when I finger press stuff, I tend to distort it. Take your next piece, right sides together. And sew that along. I really like projects that I call meditative sewing. <laughs> That's what this is for me. Sometimes I like to just have a project that I don't have to think about. I can just sit here and layer scraps on top of scraps and sew without measuring, without cutting super accurately, without really thinking about what I'm doing. I just have a pile of scraps sitting next to me and I can just sit here and sew stuff. 
Okay, so you see how fast this went together. All right, so now we've made our little scrap set. I'm gonna show you some tips on pressing this. I'm gonna come to our ironing board, our ironing mat. Now, this, this product is water soluble. So you don't have to worry about it being chunky and in there or, or um, using it to you know throw it in the wash or whatever. This is gonna wash away. That means you do not want steam. Repeat after me, no steam. If you steam this, it's gonna start to break down before you want it to. Ask me how I know. So I'm going to turn off my steam on my, on my iron. You don't wanna press it from the stabilizer either because it's, the stabilizer is pretty flimsy. So if you press directly from the fabric side, you're gonna get a nice clean press. Your sides are still nice and straight. So what that means is that I can take this to my table, line up the edges of my, my seam or my scrap tape and trim away the scraps, trim away the edges. So I'm just gonna line up on both sides. You can double check and make sure that you're at the two and a half inch line, which I am. And now what I have is scrapped jelly roll strip. So this, this is what it looks like before pressing and before trimming. It's kind of a mess. You can see it's a little floppy in there. Once you press it all down and you trim it, you have a nice shape. So let's say for your quilt, you need um, strips that are five inches by one and a half and you want them to already be scrappy. I pre-cut these into one and a half inch pieces. But if I wanted a five inch strip now, I could measure this out to whatever size I want it to be and make my own fabric that is striped. Okay, super fun. This is a great way to use up your scraps. It's a great thing to do with your leftover bits. Um, what I did to pick these out is I literally went over to my scrap bin, I picked out a pink fabric and I thought, ah, I think we're gonna make something pink and purple today. Grabbed a bunch of pink and purple sc scraps out. This is what I started with. Okay, this was my pile o mess before I started. I just have, you know, purple and pink scraps. Cut them all into same width strips. They were all different lengths. As long as they were longer than my tape, it didn't really matter. Like some of them were this long. As long as they were wider than my tape, it was fine. Okay. So that is how you make the strips. Here's your bonus set. Next, to make these groovy little um, koozies, what I did was I took two strips of that stuff that I made and I sewed it together. I made sure that I didn't line up my seams because I didn't. I wanted it to look kind of scrappy. If you didn't want it to look scrappy, you could make sure that your strips were all the same width and sew them together and do it on purpose, okay? Um, but I didn't, I wanted it to look kind of weird. So weird is what we got. Now I know there are people in my uh, fan base that have tried English paper piecing, have made blocks, have extra pieces left over, um, you know, you got a box full of stuff that you never finished, right? How cute would these be if you simply used them on these koozies? Quilters would never have unfinished projects we laying around. We would never. Um, can I say that this is one of the options for your PhD project that you have given a one through a five? Okay, so you're gonna do the same thing we did here, only instead, you can actually just take a, take these extra little pieces here. Here's your, you're gonna take two pieces of fabric and put them right sides together. So let's say this was one piece of fabric that you wanted to use your extra blocks on. You could take your extra blocks and line them up. You just need to make sure, so let's say your blocks go all the way across, you just need to make sure that there's enough to cut, that this covers all of it, that they stick out other places. Okay, so if you have extra little pieces laying around, this is a great option to use them. 
for the for the demo of this portion, I'm just going to use two pieces of batik together. Okay, this is how easy this is. We're going to take two layers of our pre-cut shape. We're going to take two pieces of fabric, right sides together. Put your batting down on the wrong side of one of your. This stuff sticks really good to the fabric, so you don't even have to pin this in want to. You can, but you don't have to, okay? So we're gonna take that, and I lost my elastic. Hold on, let me get it. Don't trip over the frog. I know, move it, frog. Hi, buddy. I'm gonna take about four inches of mask elastic. This elastic that we still, we still have this in about 10 different colors. This is the elastic we've been using to make masks with because it's really soft and not super wide. It's kind of like a hair tie. So it's perfect for this application. I've got about a four inch piece of elastic. I'm gonna take, this is a really good time for your fabric glue, okay? This is the middle of my batting. If I have these stuck together and I find the center by folding this in half, I wanna finger crease this so I know where that fold is, okay? Now I can pull the batting away, take some fabric glue, put a big glob of it. You want a pretty big chunk of fabric glue. Remember that this stuff disappears if you let it dry, so don't wait too long. Take your, your hair elastic or your mask elastic, fold it in half, make sure it's flat, and line up your ends. Stick this into the glue and stick it down. I hate trying to pin elastic because I can never get it flat. This way the elastic is flat and it's stuck down so you can sew it, okay? Then we're gonna take our batting and we're gonna put that down on top of it. You wanna make sure that your elastic, that you have two nubby ends of your elastic sticking out this side, okay? Now, if it makes you feel more comfortable to pin this, you can, but it really does stick on there pretty good, okay? And now we're gonna talk some tips about sewing this. I'm gonna go back over to my machine. I still have my quarter inch foot on, okay? I'm gonna use my quarter inch foot because I wanna have kind of a skinny seam allowance on this one. You could bump it over to the left just a little bit if you wanted to. I'm gonna start on the outside about four inches in from the end. I drop my foot. I'm going to back tack before I start sewing. Now I'm gonna keep kind of zhuzhing this so that it lines up smooth on the end. I don't want these to become unstacked. And then we're gonna just sew all the way around this. Now make sure that when you get to this elastic that you go over it a couple times. So we're gonna go forward and back and forward because you wanna make that pretty strong get to the end, turn your corner, and then you're just gonna follow this shape. Now I'll tell you why I started where I started. Because the first time I made one of these, I left my this end open to turn it because it's the straight end and I thought it was the most logical place. It was not, it was really hard to turn it that way. So now when I make these, I like to do them this direction instead. So I'm gonna sew most of the way back around this curve. I'm gonna leave myself a pretty generous opening here and back tack it again, cut it. And as per usual, I forgot to show you a step to begin with, but that's okay, we're gonna get around it. All right, now we're gonna come back and cut this. As best practices, what you should have done, which I forgot to tell you, was take a ruler and before you put your elastic in there, cut this line straight. It's not life or death because you can do it right now, but that lets you have these sticking out without cutting through them. You don't want to cut through these because you want to have enough, um, you want to have enough to, to really grip onto that, okay? We're going to cut it with scissors instead. So now you're gonna cut around the outside the extra fabric that's left. Don't cut through those tails. I'm not a big fan of using a rotary cutter without a ruler, because I'm kind of a klutz. So I find scissors to be safer if, I don't, if I'm not using a ruler. 
Cut away all your extra fabric. Now that you have scrap tape, you might want to keep all those little scraps there because you can make more fabric with them. I'm just going to cut all of that away. Trim away the, at least the extra batting in the corners. Don't cut them too small, but you want to get rid of this extra bulk over here. Okay. Now you guys have watched me turn things inside out enough to know what I'm about to show you next. Um, I'm not sure what it is about turning things inside out, but it gives me the worst anxiety, uh, that some of the worst anxiety that I have experienced on a daily basis is from turning things inside out. I don't know why. I have my theories, but still. Oh good, it's not me. I thought it was always me. It's not you. No, I'm pretty sure it's a PTSD response actually. Um, so I'm going to take my hemostats. This is the reason I left this open because this is going to let me reach into both sides to pull the ends. So if you use your hemostats and you open them up, stick them in the furthest end and pop that in there and lock it, then you can pull that through that hole easier. Because turning things inside out stresses me out so bad, I have found lots of ways to do it easier. See my hand shake, I get really cranky and it makes me kind of nuts. So whenever I'm turning things inside out, if I can get away with it, I make DJ do it. You want me to do it? Oh, I can do it. Um, okay, so that's why I like my hemostats because I can reach into one end and then I can reach into the other end. You can even grab a hold of that elastic if you're feeling brave and pull it through the end. So once I get the bulk of this through the opening, you know what I'm gonna show you next, my nifty precision point turner. I like this because I can get all the way into the end and poke those corners out. Now since you have two layers of batting in here, it is a little bit tight to get that through there. But the precision point turner, since it has a, has a ballpoint end, you can push really hard and it's not gonna rip through those points. I'm going to use the ballpoint end to push all the way around and to poke the other corners out too. Okay, so you can push pretty hard on this because of the, the shape of that turner. Now I'm going to pop this out because we have this opening now that we have to close in. I'm going to show you some tricks for that. Now if you have, um, if you have where you did, um, where you did this tape. Now that it's all stitched down and it's all ready to go, now you can steam this if you choose to, okay? Because it's already in place, the steam isn't gonna hurt it any. Um, so, let me try these places. So now I'm gonna take my iron with the steam on and press it really, really well because the steam is gonna let all of the fibers relax, okay? It's also, once it's warm and kind of, you know, steamy, you can turn these seam allowances in on themselves easier. That's another little tip for working with um, steam, is that it lets you turn all this stuff in on itself easier. So once you get everything where you want it, hit it with the steam again, and that really makes the fibers kind of stick to each other. Okay, now we're gonna go over here and we're gonna top stitch it. I'm gonna leave my quarter inch foot on because I wanna have kind of a wide stitch. I'm gonna show you what this looks like because I really want to see the stitching. I used, a, I left my quarter inch foot on so that it had a nice wide um, top stitch, okay? I'm gonna drop my foot, but I'm gonna move my needle over to the right as far as I can go without hitting the foot. So you can check your needle clearance and make sure that you're not gonna hit the foot. That's about as far as I can go. So my needle is right on the edge, and now I can top stitch, the, top stitch that opening closed and go all the way around the inside, or, or the outside of this. It 
the pivot is really, oh, here's another hot tip. Anytime I use a tool when I'm making the thing in the sample, I try to make sure I have it handy to show you. People ask me all the time what to use a stiletto for. This is a really good time to use a stiletto. Since you have all that batting in there, your feed dogs are gonna have a hard time on these corners where there's not a lot of fabric to pull. So I'm gonna drop my foot down. I'm gonna take my stiletto and really close to the edge, I'm gonna actually stick it into the fabric and push just a little bit. That's gonna let my feed dogs keep up with the stitching and actually move the fabric, okay? So when I get to all of these corners, I'm just gonna push for the first couple of stitches. You know how sometimes you start stitching through lots of things like this and your feed dogs just can't quite keep up and then you get those tiny little stitches in the corner? Oh shit, you know what? My elastic's on the inside. How did I do that? Oh, I know how I did that. All right, we're gonna talk about how to make that not happen. Nothing like live TV, y'all. Okay, we're gonna pretend that our elastic is sticking outside. And that my foot's not getting stuck on it while it's on the inside. All right. Now, I want to show how nice and clean the edge stitching is. Okay? So, all right. So, when I put these together to begin with, remember I showed you how to glue the, the <laughs> how to glue the elastic in? It has to be in the layers between the two fabric, not the layer that's between the fabric and the batting, because I'm a doof. So if you do it the right way, it's gonna look like this. Do as I say, not as I do. Okay. All right, now let's see if there's any questions. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh yeah, Brenda, I found the elastic. So there we go. Um, Oh, Sharon, it's okay if you got here late. This is going to be a replay. You can watch it in a second. All right, so, yeah. Don't put the... <sighs> put the elastic between the two layers of fabric, not between layer of fabric and the batting. Crying a million. Um, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so. These are really fun to make either super scrappy like this, or you can make them solid like this, they're a lot of fun to embroider. If you want to do embroidery on this, here's some tips. Take your piece of fabric. My, my open package is around the corner. Take your piece of fabric, lay your, 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 um, your batting shape out on your piece of fabric. With a friction pen, trace around that shape so you know where your fabric's going to be, right? And mark the middle. Then you have a blank that you can take to your embroidery machine and know where your stitching's gonna land. Remember that you need at least a half an inch away from both outside edges, because that's your seam allowance. But other than that, like I've got, I've got a couple <laughs> that have, you know, pokery jokes on them, that of course are downstairs, that um, they're just, they're funny jokes. Anyway, when you go to put the, the button on, you can put it as far out as you want you can put it further in, which we just discovered for a pint glass, it's gonna be best about that far in. But depending on what you're planning on using this for, just test it out. It's not that hard to move a button, okay? So here is our finished little bowl koozie. I mean, bowl koozie, cup koozie. Keeps the sweat off your hands, keeps the warm inside. Um, yeah, you can put elastic on them too, July. I've done that before too. I find that the elastic um, stays on a little bit better, but at the same time, then the button kind of rubs against stuff. So it really depends on what you're planning on using it for. If you use the elastic, I would probably, oh, I can't, I would put one side, that I would put probably the rough side here and the soft side here. You could even put the soft side two strips this way and then it would be even more adjustable to whatever size cup you have, okay? These are really fun little gifts, um, especially for the coffee drinkers in your life. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about the toys that we used and showed. 
The first thing that we talked about was our scrap tape. This has, I want to say, how many yards does this have? It has a whole bunch on it. I'm trying to remember how long it is. I mean, it's like yards and yards and yards and yards. I probably covered it with my sticker. It is a ridiculous amount. You could probably make the equivalent of a jelly roll out of one package of scrap tape. Remember, this is water soluble. Do not steam it. But the good news is when you throw this in the laundry, the first time you spill your beer on it, then that stuff will wash off anyway. Okay. Next, we have the pre-cut batting pieces. Okay. These have eight batting pieces in them, which means it'll make four koozies. There are photo directions on the back in case you can't remember what I told you. That one is number 101. Thanks, Sally. It makes 25 yards worth. So probably not quite as much as a jelly roll. Next, we talked about the, the um, one sixth inch wide mask elastic. We have this in about 10 colors on our website. But because I showed it on the video, anytime I show anything on a video, I try to put it on the, um, on the sale. This price up here is for one quarter of a yard. It is not for a whole yard because our website sells in quarter yard increments. So you can get as much as you want, which means a quarter yard is gonna make about two of these. So if you wanna make the four in the package, make sure you get two. Or you can go to the website and you can pick other colors. We've got some really fun, pretty colors. This is just gray because it goes with everything. That one's number 102. Number 103 is the stiletto I was trying to show, but I forgot to take out the package. And I can't find mine. So this is the stiletto by Annie. So she's the one who makes all those really great quilted bags. The thing that makes her stiletto stand out differently is one, it has a finger pressing tool on, on this end. So it doesn't, like when you finger press with your fingernail, it kind of kind of skips it, skips the fabric and makes little pleats. Since this is a smooth end, that won't happen. The other thing that makes her stiletto really cool is that the pointy bit the actual stiletto end has like a, um, you know how a diamond tipped blade, saw blade is um, rough? What's the word for that like with sandpaper? Um, it's got a coarse grit to it. So the stiletto itself has a coarse grit to it. So what that does is it helps you when you can poke into the fabric to move it as you're sewing. This tool, if you make by any bags, this makes the binding part, the part that is so, just difficult this makes it so much easier because that stiletto has that grip to it so it really holds onto the fabric and pushes it through the needle we also talked about hemostats these are six inch hemostats i use these almost every day whether it's pulling thread through the serger turning things right way out um, sometimes if i'm going to turn something and poke it at the same time this is also a blunted end if you don't have hemostats in your toolbox yet you need to get you some and then last, of course, is my favorite precision turning tool. Anytime you're gonna turn anything, this is my favorite, okay? So that is what I have to show you today. Um, if you have scraps laying around, this is a really fun project. If you don't have scraps playing, laying around, but you're doing the PhD program, the PhD um, uh, game with us right now, you probably are going to have some scraps laying around and some leftover blocks that you maybe are letting go. This is another really good option for that. These are a lot of fun and it's kind of instant gratification. Like you can have a finished product in like an hour. Um, so <clears throat> we're going to do that. If you have started your PhD list, yay for you. Hold on to that. We're going to talk about that a little bit more this week. I've had a couple people ask me what they do with their list. If you want to take a picture of your list, you can take a picture and post it in the monkey house, or you can post it on Instagram using the hashtags that we put in the email, or you can hold on to it. And we're going to talk about what you, what you have to put into the monkey house to qualify for the, for the program. We're going to talk about all that stuff on Friday. Um, I have spent most of the afternoon today making brown bag kits. Okay. This is so much fun for me because I literally get to choose quilts start to finish um, the way we're doing our bags this year we give you the option to pre-order your border and your backing and your binding and everything all at once which means your whole quilt is picked out 
So that is my favorite part of my job is picking out fabric to make things go together. So that's pretty much what I've been doing all afternoon is picking out brown bag kits. And so far they're, they're gorgeous. This quilt is gonna be so cool. So if you haven't picked up your brown bag yet, there's still lots of time. If you wanna think about what theme you want or you wanna think about your project, go ahead. Um, but this, this quilt's gonna be a whole lot of fun. So, so that is what I have to show you today. Wednesday's sale is going to be a, um, a skinny bolt sale. Those are always crazy popular and everything always sells super fast on those sales. So if you wanna do a skinny bolt sale with us, uh, make sure you show up on time, make sure you already have your comment charge turned on. So <clears throat> we will see you on Wednesday. I hope you guys are all staying warm and that your power doesn't go out. We will see you later.